Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Dracky. Today's video is going to talk about rotator cuff tears. If you are watching this video, it's because you've likely been told that you are going to require a rotator cuff repair. The purpose of this video is to reinforce all of the information that was given to you at the time of your visit, as I understand that it can be a lot to take in all at once. This way, you can share the information with your friends and family so that everybody is on the same page. Rotator cuff tears are an extremely common injury within our community. While rotator cuff tears can result from acute injury or trauma, oftentimes patients present with more overuse injuries over time. Patients present to my office complaining of pain in their shoulder that can be either acute or insidious in onset. This pain is often associated with inability to raise your arm or weakness in lifting objects out away from your body or above your head. Patients also complain of significant pain at night. This pain can be debilitating, waking patients from sleep on a nightly basis. The lack of regular sleep can then very quickly snowball into the rest of the patient's lives. Pain associated with rotator cuff tears is often refractory to all previous attempts at conservative management. Oftentimes, patients present to my office after already failing conservative treatments, including anti-inflammatories, activity modifications, work restrictions, physical therapy, and shots. When a patient presents to the office with pain as well as weakness and have failed previous conservative management, the suspicion for a rotator cuff tear is very high. To make a definitive diagnosis of a rotator cuff tear, we perform an MRI scan. An MRI allows us to see all the soft tissue of the shoulder, including the muscle, tendons, and cartilage. Unfortunately, once patients are diagnosed with a full thickness rotator cuff tear, it never heals on its own. So patients can baby the shoulder, they can modify their activities, they can ice the shoulder, they can have shots, they can go to physical therapy. At the end of the day, the rotator cuff is still going to be torn and it's still going to give pain and symptoms. In fact, as people continue to progressively use the arm, we can expect that the tear will continue to expand, causing further pain and disability. Now, let's take a closer look at the anatomy of the shoulder to better understand exactly what is the rotator cuff and how it tears. For those of you that have already been in my office, many of you are familiar with this model. This model is the model of a right shoulder. This is the collarbone in the front of the shoulder. This is the shoulder blade in the back. Here is the arm, and this is the ball of the ball and socket. Attached around the shoulder blade are a series of muscles whose tendons attach around the circumference of the ball of the ball and socket and collectively these tendons help you to rotate the arm so we call it the rotator cuff. Most people have heard of the rotator cuff but they don't necessarily know what that means. The front tendon is the subscapularis tendon, up above is the supraspinatus tendon, around the back is the infraspinatus tendon, and the far posterior tendon is the teres minor. These four tendons collectively work as a single unit not only to rotate the arm but also to elevate the arm, which is why oftentimes patients with rotator cuff tears have difficulty with their strength in lifting objects away from their body or above their head. Up above the rotator cuff tendon sits a fluid-filled sac called the bursa, and the bursa just allows the tendon to glide smoothly beneath the bony roof of the shoulder joint made up of the collarbone and this bony prominence of your shoulder blade. During normal wear and tear, you can develop inflammation of your rotator cuff as well as inflammation of the bursa, which we call a bursitis. Oftentimes a bursitis alone can be treated with corticosteroid injections into this subacromial space. Patients that have previously tried and failed 
subacromial injections often do so because they also have associated tears of the rotator cuff. When the rotator cuff tendon is torn, it tears up and off of the bone. Once the tendon is torn away from the bone, the muscle continues to try to pull on the arm to lift the arm up above the head. If the rotator cuff is not attached to the bone, then the result of the muscle pulling is a phenomena that we see called tendon retraction. So over time, as patients continue to try to use the arm, the tendon will be pulled further and further and further away from where the tendon used to attach. So oftentimes on an MRI scan, we will see a rotator cuff with the tendon backed up multiple centimeters away from the rotator cuff footprint. Because of this phenomena of retraction, once patients have a full thickness rotator cuff tear, the tear never heals on its own. During a rotator cuff repair, we place stitches into the end of this tendon and then fix the tendon back down to the bone. I hope this video has been helpful for you in order to better understand exactly what rotator cuff tears are, how they are diagnosed, and how they are treated. Although the road to recovery from a rotator cuff repair can be long, at the end of the process, I do think it's a relatively predictable process, and my expectation for all my patients is that they return to full use of the arm, independent range of motion, with full strength, and no pain. I expect that all of my patients can go back to their activities of daily living and work without restrictions. If you would like to learn more regarding rotator cuff repairs, as well as the post-operative process, please refer to my series of videos regarding rotator cuff repair. The next video will deal specifically with how we fix the tendon back down to the bone surgically. We then have subsequent videos regarding the specifics of the post-operative rehabilitation program, as well as what you can expect as you attempt to return to work following a rotator cuff repair. You can also see videos on how to do the specific home exercises during your rehab protocol, as well as a video on how to adjust and fit your sling in the post-operative period. I hope you enjoy these videos. Have a great day.